It's time for all the hits, highlights, and heroes. It's time for Friday Night Flips, powered by Pikes Peak State College. Welcome to the Friday Night Blitz, powered by Pikes Peak State College. I'm your host, Rob Namnum. Well, it wasn't the kind of loud noise that we were hoping for for the annual Cannon Game tonight, as the 47th edition of the Cannon Game between Pueblo East and Pueblo South was cut short due to an unfortunate incident. For more on what transpired tonight at Dutch Clark Stadium, we join Danny Mata. Good evening, Danny. Good evening, Rob. And yeah, it was definitely uh, not the kind of ending that we were expecting here. Uh, the 47th edition of the Cannon game and Pueblo South had come in having won three straight, but they were winless entering this game. And Pueblo East was three and one and East was hungry to take the Cannon back for the first time since 2018. Of course, there was some other stuff that happened in this game, too. Let's go to the highlights. It is our Friday night blitz pick of the week. The Cannon game between Pueblo East and Pueblo South. And everyone getting ready for the showdown and get ready to have a good time. And Pueblo East came out and was swinging early on in this one. And... All right, guys, sorry about that. All right, we are going right now. Here we go. There we go. It's Pueblo East and Pueblo South, and they are fighting for that cannon. Zayden Stevens to Isaiah Trujillo for the touchdown. It's 7-0 East. And then later, Sebastian Freeman jumping the route with the interception, and this dude is off to the races. This is going to be a pick six, and the Eagles go up by a score of 14 to nothing later. Stevens to Zach Madrill, and Madrill going to work his way down the sideline, leaping into the end zone for the touchdown. It's 21-0 East. South doing everything they can to hang in there. Mateo Esquivel with the interception. He steps out of bounds early. That would not lead to any points. And then later, Nathan Martinez making the catch on the sideline, and he is shoved out of bounds. The defender keeps driving him into the bench. The refs throw a flag, but a big fight breaks out. So for just a moment, it looked like the fight would settle down, and then it just gets worse. It keeps escalating. After it's finally broken up, the officials call the game. East wins it 23 to nothing, but because of the incident, the cannon was not awarded to the Eagles. We spoke with Pueblo District AD Aaron Bravo about the incident after the game. We met uh, as a group and we determined that uh, it was not in the best interest of this crowd to make that exchange. Uh, we'll do it at a different time. Uh, we're going to meet on Monday and, and look at the whole situation and uh, hopefully we can eliminate something like this from happening again. Anytime you can shut out the cold to win the cannon, it's a great day to be an Eagle, baby. It's three years of losing this game. You know, you come up short three years in a row and you got something burning inside you. You got a whole East Side Eagles big group over there. They got fire in their bellies and they came out to play hard. Yeah, Rob, obviously that was Coach Tony Valdez from Pueblo East. Excited that his team won the game, albeit in a, in a shorter one. Uh, now, Pueblo East will get the cannon, but for obvious reasons, they didn't get it tonight, so they'll have it rewarded to them at a later date. As far as where the two teams go from here, it's still subject to a review. Reporting from Dutch Clark Stadium, Danny Mata, KRDO News Channel 13 Sports. All right, thank you for that, Danny. Yeah, not the uh, finish we wanted to see tonight at Dutch Clark Stadium. Palmer Ridge was riding the positive train heading into week five of the season as the Bears entering the night undefeated, but they were well aware that they were going to need a near-perfect performance against Ponderosa. For more on the battle of the two 4-0 teams, we join Jasmine Arenas. Good evening, Jasmine. Good evening, Rob, and that's exactly right what you just said. But here at Hatchell Field at Academy District 20, another exciting game, which we'll get to in a bit. But for now, let's go to Don Breeze Stadium, kicking things off there as the Bears took on Ponderosa. Both coming in undefeated, like you said. Ponderosa gets on the board first with a field goal. But the Bears get things moving soon. Down 3 nothing. Derek Hester finds Nathaniel Robinson. He says, get out of my way, defense. We're trying to go home. And count on Nathaniel Gator Robinson to do just that as he rushes for a one-yard touchdown. Bears bringing down Ponderosa defensively, too. But first, hey, a celebration. Bears stay competitive to remain undefeated as they take this dub 
48 to 34. An incredible win, 5 and 0 oh now. We now take you to Hatchell Field coming homecoming night, but that's not the queen. The Discovery Canyon Thunder hosting the Centennial Bulldogs. Third quarter action, Thunder in the lead, 14 to 13. Bulldogs trying to catch up, but the Thunder striking some lightning on them, bringing them down. And again, they answer back here. A blocked punt for the touchdown. Blame it on Ethan Simmons and Bodie Suckle. Teamwork and the Thunder led 21 to 13 at that point. They celebrate and it's all good, but not so fast. In the fourth, Blake Roberts finds Emmanuel Hanrahanda. If I didn't pronounce that right, I'm sorry. Who steps on the gas pedal, no brakes into the end zone. I hope you're seeing that on the screen because it was a good play there. A two-point conversion is good. Game is tied at 21 in the fourth. And the Thunder would come back with a field goal, though, to win it 24 to 21. An incredible night here at Hatchell Field as well. Both teams, now the Discovery Canyon and Pueblo Centennial did what they had to do. But in the end, it was just a good competitive game on homecoming night here for uh, the Discovery Canyon Thunder. Rob? All right, definitely was. Thank you for that, Jasmine. Great job out there. Now, since their hard-fought victory against the defending 2A state champs, Eaton, in week one of the season, the TCA Titans have been rolling. The Titans rolling into the Scorpion pin tonight. Pick it up in the third quarter. Ethan Argundy takes the handoff. And he stretches into the end zone. That's six for the Titans. And then the, the Titans in the red zone again. And guess who? Eric Gundy again with another short touchdown plunge. And how about TJ Herbick? He comes into the game, a little direct snap to him. He wastes no time. The Titans, they would go on to win this one by a score of 43 to nothing. Coming up next on the Blitz, we will let you know if it was a happy homecoming for Vista Ridge. More Blitzen after the break. <laughs> 